Dave Ramsey becoming debt-free and what Bernie and I didn't exactly follow Dave Ramsey's advice on while we were becoming debt-free, even though we were going through his program. That's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. What's up, guys? I'm Mike. And I'm Britt. And we've been debt-free for almost five years now, and we owe a lot of that to what we learned listening to Dave Ramsey on the radio, going through his Financial Peace University program, and actually attending a live event that he did years ago. So if you're unfamiliar with Dave Ramsey, he's a financial guru who's most widely known for helping people like Brittany and I get out of debt. He talks about you know setting up an emergency fund, funding your kid's college fund, investing for retirement, paying off your house early, a bunch of other stuff that he wraps into something that's well organized and neat called the baby steps. So the whole purpose of the baby steps is to give people a step-by-step -step process to follow in order to set them on track to a good financial success in their future and also to help them achieve a sense of financial peace in their lives. Hence Dave Ramsey's program, Financial Peace University. And of course, within the baby steps are even more detailed kind of like instructions or recommendations such as the envelope system you can use to help pay for things with cash, etc. And while the baby steps are very simple, extremely well organized and highly effective if followed, everyone's lives are a little bit different. And at least for Brittany and I, following the baby steps 100% to the T the entire way wasn't necessarily what was best for us. That being said, we did follow a lot of it step by step. However, there were two things in particular that we didn't follow that we kind of strayed kind of far away from what he recommends in terms of following the baby steps. These are them. So the first thing we did differently was baby step number one where he talks about a thousand dollar emergency fund. We felt this was way too small and too risky for us. Yeah, so Brittany and I have had multiple times in the past where, specifically with medical events, the total cost out of our pocket over the course of three, four, five months has been well over the $1,000 mark. In fact, close to the $10,000 mark. So that's, that's one reason that we felt having $1,000 was just way too small for us. Another reason is that Brittany and I have a, kind of an irregular income. Brittany's income is more stable because she has like a typical nine to five. I'm self-employed and so you know, some months I can earn a few hundred dollars, other months I can earn $8,000. The past two months, if you've been following our budget videos, I will link one of those up there. Over the past two months is a good example of that. Like this month, I've earned a lot more than I did last month. So another reason is uh, car expenses. Both, you know, both Brittany and I drive pretty old cars and while regular maintenance isn't all that expensive, there have been times in the past where, you know, in one month, there seems to be multiple things wrong with both of our cars at the same time and, you know, like, a few hundred dollars here, a few hundred dollars there, like a few hundred dollars to fix this, four hundred dollars to fix that. Like it adds up very, very quickly when both of your cars break at the same time. Or not even break, but just, you know, they both need, they both have things that need to be done so you can drive safely. So instead of having a thousand dollar emergency fund, what we normally had in our emergency fund was between four and five thousand dollars. And this had to do with more, more with Brittany's and my risk tolerance and if like something major medical were to happen, this, you know, four to five thousand dollars is the, the number that we felt comfortable having in there. Considering our deductible and like how often things broke with our cars, which really wasn't that much, but it was enough to like make us cautious about having a thousand dollars in that fund, if that makes sense. So the second thing that Brittany and I did differently than how Dave Ramsey would typically recommend actually has to do with baby step two. And that is the order that you pay off your debts. Now he recommends smallest to largest, and this has to do with psychology. Once you start paying off debt and like you see things being paid off, it's like a, it's like a dopamine hit. It's like you get excited and you, can, you start thinking like, wow, this can actually be done. That is very true. I mean, Brittany and I can attest to that. That's, that's definitely what happened to us in case it was yeah. this weird kind of like very strange excitement that we got. After one debt was paid off and then we were ready to yeah, like let's one. tackle the next one. Like yeah. paying payments every month got exciting in a weird way. So we didn't necessarily follow this all the time. And I'll give you an example. Like two of the first debts that Brittany and I paid off were not the smallest debts that we owed. They were our cars because they carried a large portion of our total monthly payments. I think our total monthly payments for everything was close to $1,500 when we first started the program. Brittany's and my cars took up $640 of that. So we were like, okay, let's sell our cars. Let's pay our cars off, get rid of that. And then that'll free up $640 per month in free cash flow that we, then we could start knocking off all these other smaller debts with. And that's what we did. I think there may have been like one, one or two other debts that we kind of switched places with that were just like disproportionately large payment versus how much of like a percent they took up in our total debt portfolio. That's kind of a weird way of saying it, but like, <laughs> yeah, debt portfolio. We also didn't necessarily do a debt snowball most of the time we did a debt avalanche. <laughs> yeah. Meaning we would 
save up like thousands of dollars in our savings. And then, you know, once we had enough to make a significant payment, that's what we did. And a lot of the times that significant payment was enough to just totally pay off the debt. Yeah. We in did, the first place. We did that on a few of them. Yeah, yeah, we did quite a number of them. I think the last student loan that we had was by far the largest student loan. That was I forget how much it was. Twenty thousand dollars. Twenty thousand dollars. So once we got once we got down to that one, there were some months we'd make like you know the the monthly payment, and then other months we'd pay like two thousand dollars, three thousand dollars. I think our last payment on that loan was three thousand dollars mm-hmm. or something like that, because I had sold my car, and then the cash that we got from selling my car went toward that and totally paid it off. All right, so we're gonna talk about one more thing, and this, this one thing is kind of a bonus. It's not necessarily something that's hardwired into the baby steps like the previous two have been. It's just something that's more of a guideline, something that's more of a recommendation, and that's what's called the envelope system. And if you're unfamiliar with the envelope system, basically it's, you know, you have envelopes that you put cash in. So for example, Brittany and I, we would budget $400 for groceries every month. And when we started the envelope system, we would take out $400 in cash at the beginning of the month, put it in our grocery envelope, and once that money ran out, we didn't buy any more groceries. Yeah. And there were many months that we often grew hungry. <laughs> no, we but didn't. We just rummaged through the pantry and threw stuff together. Yeah, no, we were fine. We were fine. Usually what happened is if we ran out of money, we would, we would just use more. So something else that we used the envelope system for was what we called fun money. And that was money that we could spend to keep our sanity. You know, just basically, you know, going out to eat, having having fun once in a while. We budgeted forty dollars a month. We put that in a separate envelope, and once it ran out, that was it. No more eating out. No more movies. No more. Whatever it was. Yeah, we had, we had to be creative and figure out figuring out what we could do outside of the house that, did, that didn't require money. So we started doing that at first, and then after a while, it bec- it kind of became a hassle, especially with groceries. Dave also recommends this for like whatever it makes sense for us. So gasoline, utilities. For us, in our case, we pay our utilities with a check. So having cash didn't really make sense for that. But same with rent. Same with rent. Yeah, we just wrote a check for rent. So eventually, it stopped making sense for groceries because it was just so much easier to to pay with our debit card instead of bringing you know a huge wad of cash to the grocery store every time and then keeping track of the change and then having this huge envelope that weighed like five pounds with a bunch of coins in it and dragging that around all the time. Or like, if we go to the grocery store and we forget the envelope, we have to drive back and get anyways. We eventually just stopped using the envelope system and kept track of everything on the back of our monthly budgets. We just wrote down all of our expenses and once we reached the threshold, that was it. Obviously that only works if you're disciplined enough to do that. Writing things down and keeping track of your expenses on you know a spreadsheet or on a piece of paper, it's a lot better if you have the discipline to stop once you've reached your budget. And for me, at the beginning, it was easier to do the envelope system because I had not developed that discipline yet. And I even still struggle sometimes to make sure I don't go over on certain areas. So that's why I still have my money that I take out every month in cash because I need to see it. And there's there's also like studies, I think MIT did a study that Dave Ramsey mentions a lot that like, you know, Paying with cash activates the pain centers in the brain, and it's it's de- there definitely is some like psychological aspects to paying with cash over paying with a, a, debit, a debit card and actually seeing it go away. So so those are the two things that well the two things and the one bonus thing that we didn't really follow Dave's recommendations on. We more personalized it to our immediate situation and went from there. But that being said, we do plan to follow the general outline of the baby steps going forward in the next chapter of our lives. So as of right now, we would be on baby step number four, and that is investing 15% of our income. Once Brittany and I get moved into this house, shout out to our house vlogs if you're interested, you know, once our finances settle down, we will be hopefully investing a lot more than 15% of our income because we, we want to invest a lot more than 15% of our income. Yeah. So again, that's like another thing that we're gonna be personalizing to Brittany's and my immediate situation, you know, what we want out of life, et cetera. So speaking of moving, we're closing in a week. Once we move in, there's going to be a lot of things that we need to buy after after putting our down payment and paying closing costs and everything else. So if you are interested, the next video we're filming and, and uploading here will be a budget update video for February, mm-hmm. basically you know detailing our expenses, our income for this month, and how many expenses we have for the house, yep. and how many things we are planning on buying after that. Dining room table, we need one of those. We would like a new bed. So stuff like that to go into the house. So if you're interested in following our journey, hit the subscribe button, 
That video will be up probably toward the end of the week. We'll definitely have some more house videos after that and definitely more investing videos after that because I'm super excited about investing. Yeah. All right, guys. With that being said, thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it, and we'll see you next time. Bye.